Hello and welcome back to Between Two Stethoscopes, your source for the physician assistant life from pre-PA to PAC. I'm Bree Marks, your host. We've talked a lot so far on Between Two Stethoscopes about PA school. Many of you have had questions about the day-to-day -day life of a PA student and also how to get into academia. So today our guest is gonna give us some information straight from the source. I have with us Abby Davis, who is a practicing physician assistant. She is also the academic director and an assistant professor at Marywood University PA program. So thanks for joining us today, Abby. Thanks for having me. So Abby, can you tell us a little bit, how did you get into medicine? Okay, um, when I was a child, I had a physician assistant who took care of me as mm -hmm. in my primary care office. And I, even as a young girl, like eight, nine, 10 years old, thought, she's really cool and I really want to do what she does and um, she sort of became my role model and even from the time I was in high school that was the track I was taking when I was going into college was to become a PA. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, what was your clinical or excuse me what was your clinical career like before you got into teaching? Um, my clinical career was all in emergency medicine so I started at a local trauma center in Scranton, Pennsylvania in 2005 um, in emergency medicine and that's where I stayed until I started teaching full-time. All right, great. Yeah. And how did you get into teaching? Um, in the emergency room, I was always a preceptor. So we took students from multiple different schools. So I always mm -hmm. had one, two, sometimes three students with us. Um, so I was always a preceptor, which I loved doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in 2012, I wanted to teach an emergency medicine course as an adjunct. Uh, so I had planned on doing that. And then a full-time teaching job opened up. And I ended up kind of going for it. And I took it. And I've been teaching ever since. That's amazing. Yeah. So what have you enjoyed about teaching? I love being with the students. So the students are certainly my biggest uh, enjoyment in teaching is just being with them. Uh, the most sort of gratifying part about teaching, I think, is seeing those aha moments mm -hmm. unfold. So it's fun to be with them from the beginning where they have very little medical knowledge mm -hmm. to taking them through that didactic year and then watching those aha moments happen. So at the beginning, we tell them it will all come together right. and they say, no, it won't. I don't believe you. This is right. crazy. And then usually about the third semester of the didactic year, they go, okay, you're right. It's all coming together. I get it now. Um, usually we have to tell them things like seven or eight times and different yeah. instructors have to tell them the same thing, I think, until they go, okay, she must be right. That must actually be true. <laughs> right. um, and then even further, taking it a step further when they get into their clinical year and then they see patients with those disorders. And they go, oh, I remember that. Right. So and watching really those, clicks. yeah, watching those moments unfold has probably been the, the best part about it. What do you think has been challenging about um, being a clinical instructor? Um, something that I think that people probably don't think about is going into PA education is sort of the equivalent of going into a new specialty mm -hmm. in being a PA. Uh, so there's a lot of new things that you have to learn in the world of education. So that has been a challenge. Um, but also when students struggle, that's a challenge for us as well. We don't ever like to see that. And we become really close with our students. So we sort of feel those struggles right. with them. So that's that's probably another sort of hard part about the job. Okay. If someone's interested in getting into academia and teaching at a PA program, what do you suggest that they do? What's a path that's pretty uh, normal that people um, take? Usually people who want to get into teaching, we suggest become a preceptor first. Um, so we like to see, you know, history of being a preceptor and teaching students in that clinical role. Um, and that would be something that usually you would have enjoyed doing that first and, you know, have a good success as being a preceptor. And then the next step might be something like being an adjunct for one course or mm -hmm. even going into a PA program and helping with teaching a skill or teaching lab or um, helping with practical exams, things like that. Um, before sort of jumping into teaching full-time. Okay. And then you can see if it's a good fit for you too. Right, Yeah, that makes sense. And um, have you found that people that primarily teach miss, their, miss the clinical side? Yes, um, I'm definitely a good example of that. I mm -hmm. certainly miss emergency medicine more than anything. Um, but most people who teach full-time do take, you know, one clinical day a week or they'll baby work as a PA, you know, on a weekend or in mm -hmm. the evenings and things to keep their clinical skills up um, and sort of be able to keep their foot in that door a little bit too. Got it. Well, switching gears a little <laughs> bit back to students, um, you know, as someone that sees students every day, what are some of the traits that you consistently see in successful students? Um, so everybody that comes in is obviously very smart. Our mm -hmm. students are all used to getting really high grades as an undergrad. Um, so something that's really important, I think, is time management, because mm -hmm. as you go from being an undergrad to being a grad student, 
you know, you might go from having two hard classes a semester to having 12 hard classes yeah. a semester. So um, being able to time manage that is really important in, you know, somebody who can still be successful with that many hard classes and maybe four or five hard tests in a week. Um, right. Certainly challenging. So being able to um, make a good um, make a good schedule and time manage all that's really important. And the other thing is students who are resilient. So mm -hmm. again, everybody is really uh, usually A's and B's coming into PA school. And then sometimes you have a bad day and you have a bad test grade and it's important to keep moving. So, you know, take what you learned from that experience and keep going is really important. Um, and so those two factors, I think time management and resilience are helpful. Absolutely. And I think both of those really translate into the working world too, um, especially what you said about resilience, because we're human. Mm -hmm. You are going to make mistakes sometimes as a practicing provider, and you can't let every, every mistake or every bad outcome be the end of your career because you owe it to that patient to take what went wrong, learn from it, move forward, be yeah. a better provider in the future because sure. of it. Yeah. So if a student is struggling or falling behind um, in one particular class or even in general, what do you suggest they do to get back on track? Um, we always tell students, reach out to us and reach out to us early. So mm -hmm. if you're struggling, don't wait. Um, go to the instructor of that class, go to your advisor, go to somebody in the program and let them know that you're struggling. Uh, usually what I'll tell students is let's set up a few minutes to sit down and talk about, you know, if it's just one class, bring your notes for that class and let's go through how are you studying and where are you getting the information from? Bring your textbook and bring your notes. Uh, we'll talk about your study patterns and how many days are you or how many hours in the day are you studying? Mm -hmm. Um, how are you studying? Are you studying alone? Are you studying in groups? Other things that I always ask students is, are you sleeping? Yeah. Are you eating? Um, right. Are you exercising? When's the last time you went outside? <laughs> yeah. So we do sort of do an overall, like, how are you visit. Mm -hmm. um, so certainly reach out to a faculty member or, you know, if it's an adjunct, reach out to somebody and let them know that you're struggling so we can sort of have that sit down chat and um, reach out to your classmates and see mm -hmm. if there's somebody in your class who is doing well in that class. Um, and ask them for help and ask them for advice and see if maybe, you know, there's something that you're missing in terms of studying for that class um, and see if maybe you could sit down and study together with that person and they would be able to help you. So the probably take home message is reach out, reach out to somebody right. and Don't ask wait. for help. Yeah. And I think too, sometimes a classmate can understand, can yes. explain it to you in a way that maybe a professor doesn't doesn't remember yeah. that they didn't understand. Right. You don't remember learning that. So right. To you, it's... To you, it's, it's like second easy. nature. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you don't remember that time when you had to learn it. Exactly. Originally. Yeah. Definitely. Well, as we're wrapping up here, Abby, any words of wisdom for students that are in the thick of it right now? Um, just keep moving. Just <laughs> keep working hard. Um, every day is going to be a challenge and you're going to have days that are tough and maybe you didn't score as well as you wanted on a test or maybe out on clinicals you felt like you didn't get the diagnosis right and mm -hmm. those are obviously hard days um, and then you're gonna have really great days in PA school so you're gonna have days that you feel like hey I might actually know what I'm doing here mm -hmm. and I did get that diagnosis right or you know my sutures looked really great and my mm -hmm. preceptor commented on them so you'll have both sort of days but it's important to just keep moving um, it's important to just keep working hard, take what you learned, whether it be a good experience or a bad, and just keep going and working hard because that will sort of serve you well in your career as a PA because that doesn't change. Right. You yeah. still will have good days right. and bad days. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I could not agree with, <laughs> with you more on that. Um, well, thank you so much for thank being with us today, Abby. I think people really got a lot out of your insights. Great. So thanks, thanks again. For me. Um, so if you got anything out of this content, if you liked it, please like and subscribe, especially if you're on YouTube. You can follow me on um, Instagram at Between Two Stethoscopes and also like the page on Facebook. So thanks again for tuning in. We'll be back with a new interview soon.